welcome back to this special edition of Oklahoma Live. And Alex, so many people having questions about this devastating storm. And you know, why is more always being targeted? What a question like that. Is it is it yeah. as bad as um, May third? And so earlier, I caught up to put all of these questions to a seasoned Oklahoma meteorologist. Take a listen. Here with meteorologist Aaron Tuttle. And Aaron, we've been hearing that this past tornado has been the worst tornado in the history of the world. Still devastating, very tragic tornado, but you don't agree that it's the worst the world has ever seen. Yeah, a few reasons just for that. The main thing is we have never been able to track every tornado that's ever happened. A lot of times emotion takes over when you're in a situation like this, which is understandable. Uh, but the bottom line is you have to stick with the science and what's out there. And still so far from what we've been able to collect and seen both radar data wise and also as far as damage wise May 9th uh, May 3rd of 1999 is still going to be the, the most devastating tornado that this part of the city has seen from Oklahoma City up through more just alone the fact the number of injuries was over 500 uh, the number of deaths was up over around 40 uh, over a billion dollars in damage this case around less deaths thank goodness less injuries so far we'll still have to wait on the damage that's the one thing that could kind of propel this up to a little higher category because we you know built up over the last 10 or so years so there's a little bit more structures involved and that may help to, to propel that but as far as the loss of life goes this does not compare uh, wind speeds doppler radar estimated around 300 or so for the may 3rd tornado this tornado so far doppler radar estimated around 220 just above the surface uh, you have a little friction involved at ground level so uh, weather service has rated it so far right around 210 but they're still doing assessments so that may change uh, as the days go on and looking at the comparisons between may 3rd and the may 19th and 20th tornadoes especially the May 20th, the paths are almost exactly the same. Yeah, what it, what it causes that? I had to go back and plot the two, and uh, the path from the May uh, third tornado went a little bit north the side of Moore, whereas the southern one ended up going just from the south end of the city, and of course ended up hitting the movie theater. Uh, it actually spared more proper, and that's why I think it was actually a good thing that, that Moore itself, actually, even though they took a hit, they didn't take as bad of a hit as they could have, plus the tornado had weakened some as it was coming into a more highly populated area. Uh, but the similarities are there as far as the track on the south side of town. And I know you had a question about that as well, is, is why does this area seem to always get hit? Yeah. And it's going to sound silly, but it's just luck of the draw. Um, now, there are some generic ingredients that happen here in Oklahoma uh, where things kind of come together here across the central part of the state. Uh, Oklahoma City is one of the highest tornado targets in the country. Uh, we've actually had 10 F4 and F5 tornadoes in the city. So it's, it's, it's something that does happen here. Of course, the geographical location is probably favorable for tornadoes more so than other places in the country. But just the, just the fact that it's the city of Moore really doesn't mean anything different than, say, in Edmond right. or anything like that. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's no X marks the spot on more, so there's no need to move out of more. What I would honestly do is make sure you're caught up on your insurance. That's the number one thing anybody has to do. And really quickly, we are running out of time, Aaron, but I know you're a big social media guru. I've been known to tweet a little bit too. Uh, how has social media and technology changed this storm and weather coverage? It's just so different from May 3rd back in 1999. No one had a cell phone and just the response time and probably people seeking shelter sooner, knowing, right. knowing the risk. Yeah, in the news business, we call it citizen journalism, just because everybody is now equipped with the ability to show you what happens real time real life right now and post it and it's an incredible uh, means of communication it's great for storm chasers like when we were out storm chasing it's great for meteorologists it's great for the weather service because they can get these reports in real time it's no more guesswork it's no more let's wait an hour after the fact it's right now that does come with a caveat sometimes you get some false information thrown in uh, you know numbers get run up when they shouldn't be but eventually those will come back down reality uh, so that's the one negative aspect but there's so many more positive things that can overcome that plus it puts you in touch with family friends instantly to let you know that you're okay you know and, and who needs help the, the fastest and the quickest so response times for emergency crews like that yeah it's been really interesting to see just the um, pictures that have popped up on the internet we got a picture of the warren theater i think just five minutes after it was hit aaron tuttle meteorologist and storm chaser thank you so much for your time and and thank you for keeping us all up to date and keeping us safe no problem my pleasure 
Very interesting. It was interesting that he disagrees with a lot of the meteorologists yeah. around here. And he is right in saying that that May 3rd tornado from 1999 went a lot longer and started farther down. And, I like uh, the visual. It was about this big. You can tell I've been practicing my meteorology. <laughs> um, and then the May 19th and May well, the May 20th one was, you know, smaller and this is my green screen here and, and here is the difference but he was fantastic and he does such a great job via social media facebook yes. and twitter keeping people forewarned and up to date which you know what i think that could really save lives i absolutely. really do absolutely you know he's one of the people that i go to if there's severe yeah. weather coming at us then i definitely check my facebook he's really good at keeping us updated and again that's facebook.com slash ats fans ats fans yes. yes and uh it's just interesting that that's how things have gone you know uh, May 3rd, 1999, no one had a smartphone, no one had Facebook. If you weren't around TV or radio, you probably didn't know what was going on. Yeah, there's so many methods now to keep right. informed, which is a great thing. All right, well, dozens of pets are lost because of the more tornado. What you can do to help our furry friends find their family.